Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We just want to praise the Lord this morning as we go into um, studying. And um, we, I just want to worship the Lord this morning with you as we begin to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, let's just go into prayer right now. Father God, we just come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for the blood of Jesus, Lord, that cleanses and washes us from all of our sin, Lord. Father God, every one of this people that would watch this video, Lord, I pray a blessing over them that you cut off the enemy from speaking in their atmosphere right now. We command every unclean spirit be silent and leave our presence in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for giving understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. The Apostle Paul said that he prayed that the uh, that we would be enlightened, that our eyes would be opened with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Father, we ask you to enlighten us, to open our minds, to receive what you have for us, Father God. And right now, as we get ready to study your word, Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for the ability to study your word. Thank you that, number one, we can read, that we can understand. The Bible says the, uh, God will keep the man's mind in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on God. Father, thank you for helping us to choose to choose to keep our minds stayed on you, Lord. That is so very precious in your sight, Lord. Every choice that we make toward worshiping you, toward uh, you, Father God, whether it be going to church, whether it be going to Bible study, um, prayer and ministry, whatever that may be, Father God, you see our coming after you in whatever way that might be, even if we lack, even if we fail, Lord God, you see that as an attempt to come toward you, Lord. Um, but Father, you said that you have compassion on those those that are ignorant and out of the way, Father God. And now, Lord, we ask you to help us not to be ignorant any longer. Help us not to stay ignorant. That means unlearned, untaught, Lord. But help us to allow your Holy Spirit to teach us in a greater capacity so that you can remove everything that's hindering our path with you. Everything that's hindering you from flowing to us and then through us, Father God. We thank you for that. We just want to say bless you, Father. Bless you, Father, for the grace that you have given. And we just want to worship you right now. And we just want to praise you. And beloved, right now as I begin to, um, I'm going to sing this song. It's a, it's a Hebrew song. Um, I'm going to sing it first in Hebrew and then in English so you'll know what the words are while I'm singing it in Hebrew. So it goes like this. Me kamo ka
mi camoca Beli maronai Mi camoca Ne darba kodesh No This is a song that Miriam, Moses' sister, sang as they were coming out and God had just closed up the Red Sea on the Pharaoh and his army. Hallelujah. And so she says, Who is like thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorified in holiness? You Working wonders, O oh Lord, who is like Thee, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word and the power of your name. And thank you, Father, for opening our understanding as we get into the Word of God. There's a couple of verses before we start with Psalm chapter 77. Um, I have begin writing, and I didn't know that um, over the last year I've already, God has been birthing this um, uh, message in my heart, and it's called Becoming the Sons of God. Hallelujah. And so that, that beloved, that verse comes comes out of John chapter 1 verse 12 and we're just laying a foundation verse and I want to thank everybody for joining me this morning. I want to thank you for taking the time to have a desire to study the word of God. It is so very necessary for us to study and know God. What I have been learning in this season and what I want to share with you is that the Lord has been showing me those things that have been blocking. You know in the Old Testament um, when Daniel was praying and and um, he was praying for a breakthrough hallelujah um, father God um, father God you know he he prayed for an answer and then finally the archangel comes and says hey I was held up by the prince of the power of Persia it was an unclean spirit that was over the whole uh, domain and so he said he said he had been held up by this prince and um, this angel of the Lord had been battling and warring in the atmosphere. But beloved, what God showed me about warfare is that the warfare has already been accomplished. God, uh, God is already, he said, behold, I give unto you power to trample on serpents. And so it, God has already given us that power. But beloved, if we're not walking in that power, there's something there that's blocking, not in the atmosphere around us, but it is blocking in us. It is blocking in us. And that's what the Lord has shown me. As, as I study and, and pray the word of God, and as I begin to get into the word of God, beloved, God begins to open me up from the inside. We have to understand that, beloved, that God is wanting to open us up to flow through us. He first has to, though, flow to us. So we have to remove everything that's blocking from God flowing to us and then flowing through us into others. God wants his Holy Spirit, uh, his kingdom to come, his will to be done in you and in me and then through us. But beloved, if there is a block, if there's a hindrance in us, it's not in the atmosphere. 
That's what I'm learning and what is so very powerful. Our enemy is already defeated and all the devil can do is come at us with thoughts. He's trying to bombard our mind with thoughts, beloved, and uh, doubt, worry, fear, um, condemnation, those things that, that, that we're wrestling with, that's all in the unclean world and they are just trying to seduce our thoughts to get us not to worship God to get us not to come after God. See, Satan's after my flow, beloved. He's after your flow. I'm talking about the flow of the Holy Ghost. And that's what God has been saying to me, beloved. The warfare's already been accomplished. Satan is after your flow. He don't want you to flow in the Holy Ghost. He wants you to be blocked up, bitter, hateful, full of unclean thoughts, so that you can't worship God and neither can you wor uh, lead anyone else to worship God. Hallelujah. I'm glad you joined me, brother, this morning. Hallelujah. Father God wants to open us up on the inside, but there are some areas that we are not allowing God because we don't trust. Beloved, there, uh, trust is such a beautiful thing, but um, I want to get into the message and I just want to share this uh, message with you this morning. Um, beloved, as we start out and we said this, this, this teaching is called becoming the sons of God. Um, he says, uh, in John 1 12, but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Hallelujah. So we're becoming the sons and daughters of the most high God. Acts chapter 17, verse 24 says, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwells not in temples made with hands. See, beloved, God is not dwelling at your church. Yes, your church is anointed. Uh, your church, uh, uh, seemingly the pastor has anointed the four corners of the property. Yes, God, that is a holy ground that God said, I will meet with my people there. But see, that was in the Old Testament. In the New, he said, I want to live in them. I want to be in them. I will be their God and they will be my people, beloved. God is wanting to dwell in you and through you. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about is what may be hindering and blocking the flow of God in you. The, the becoming of the sons of God. Yes, we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We get delivered. We get set free. Maybe God's taken a bondage and a, an addiction from you. Maybe, maybe um, he's just set your mind clear. Beloved, when you get born again, your spirit is set free. But guess what? Your mind still has a bunch of stinking thinking as one of my sisters said on Facebook it is stinking thinking but this stinking thinking is a seduction of the enemy beloved and and he comes through our our spiritual gate as uh, as um, thoughts they're introduced into our mind as thoughts that oppose that resist the word of God you got to get it. You got to get it. Those thoughts that are bombarding your mind, causing you to doubt God, causing you to be afraid of not stepping out and doing God's will. These are areas, beloved, that God wants to set us free. And, and the one place that Satan fights us really strong is just our intimate time with the Lord because that's where I've received all of my deliverance. Yes, back before I was sent out to do ministry, beloved, I would go to the altar and yes, a saints of God would pray over me. But it came a time when God began to reveal to me that this block that, that, that was keeping me from flowing in the Holy Ghost was uh, what the Bible calls strongholds. And these strongholds, beloved, the Bible says are just lies that oppose God's truth. So it's what you're doing is you're holding a view about God and about your situation that is not true at all. And this beloved is what God wants to get to the root of 
open you up so that you can flow with his spirit. Hallelujah. And so Psalm Acts 17, God that made the whole, all the world and all things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwells not in temples made with hands. God is not dwelling in temples made with hands. We are the only thing on this earth that is not made with hands, beloved. And we were, God breathed his breath into us. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, You, beloved, are the temple of God and his spirit dwells in you. Hallelujah. God's spirit dwells in you. When you receive and accept Christ, you receive the indwelling of the spirit of God. Psalms chapter 77, 13. And this is where we're going to really dig in and get deliverance and freedom in our mind. Beloved, Psalm 77, 13 says, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? He said, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. You got to get it. You, beloved, are the sanctuary. God's way is through you, beloved, is in you. So he says, thy way, it, it, this means a going, a journey, a direction, a path, a mode, a course of action. Psalm 1832, and if you remember uh, John, John chapter uh, uh, 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes unto the Father but by me. So when he says, thy way is in the sanctuary, he's talking about his word through you, his word in in you. So what we're doing now is removing those hindrances and those blocks from keeping the Holy Ghost from flowing through you, beloved. Psalm 1832 says, it is God that girds me with strength and makes my way perfect. What is my way? It is, beloved, before I even uh, get up out of this chair to leave the room um, to to have a course of action, I have to first think about where I'm going and what I'm doing. But before that, I already have sent signals from my mind to my hands to lift up on the desk, to pull myself up, to plant my foot, to go. Beloved, you have to get it. Your way, your way of going has to first start right here. And this is what, and I've preached in other, other messages, I've taught in other messages that, beloved, Satan is after your decision thinking process. That's what he wants. He wants to get in the way of the way of God, meaning the path of his word. You know, beloved, God told me, he said, I flow through the path of my word. God flows through his word. He, beloved, you got to get it. You got to get it. Once you get a revelation of this, that God flows through his word, man, it is so freeing. It is, I, I just pray, beloved, today that you will be set free free in your mind to know that God flows through the path of his word. Hallelujah. So Psalm 25, four, show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Uh, let's back up to Psalm 1832. It is God that girds me with strength and makes my way perfect. The Bible says, put on the full armor of God. He talks about girding the loins of your mind. Hallelujah. He said, it is God that girds me with strength. How do you gain strength? Is it with your physical bicep? No. He's talking about girding you on the inside with strength. How is that? Through the word of God. The Bible says the word is quick. It is powerful, able to divide asunder between bone and marrow, soul and spirit. Beloved, listen, listen, God girds us. He literally guards our mind through the path of his word. Okay. But what if there's a block? What if there's a block keeping me from truly seeing the Father, truly allowing the flow of the Holy Ghost? Listen, he says, Psalm 25, 4, show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. God wants to teach us his path. Psalm 25, 8, God, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, will he teach sinners in the way? Hallelujah, hallelujah. He says, the meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. Now, this is the key 
to really truly receiving everything that God has for you. He says, the meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. The word meek means gentleness of mind, needy, humble, lowly as a child. So he says, Jesus even said, beloved, hold on. I've got to get up and go turn this fan on because I'm getting kind of uh, fired up here. So, <laughs> beloved, hallelujah. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, hallelujah. He says, the meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. Listen, he says, uh, listen, Jesus said, no man... Um, unless you become as this little child, see the disciples were rebuking, uh, re saying, re trying to rebuke the children from really truly coming to the father. And Jesus said, hinder not this little uh, baby child. Um, he said, uh, uh, unless you become as a child, you will no likewise enter into the kingdom of heaven. What does that mean? Does God want us walking around sucking our thumb? No, he's talking about a mind of meekness, a mind of lowliness of um, love, of understanding, of humility. God wants you and I, beloved, to have that heart of humility. And what is that? Children are completely trusting in the Father. Children are completely trusting in the Father. Yes, beloved, they are completely trusting in Father God. They are looking to him for provision. We are looking to him for strength and for courage. That's what children do. When I was raising my children, my children were looking to me for all of these things. And then as I was supposed to train them, teach them the way they should go, then they begin to gain courage in the Holy Spirit teaching them the ways of God. See, beloved, that's what God is doing in the spirit, beloved. God wants to do that in the spirit. Somewhere, you know, somewhere this, this path has been broken for us and maybe we didn't have our parents. Maybe our parents didn't even know God and then we got saved as we got older. Beloved, this is a serious thing because we were never truly shown how to walk that path with God. We were never truly shown, uh, as Psalm 77, 13 says, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. We were never truly shown that God flows through us, to us, and then through us. So in John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then in John 1, 14, it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Beloved, the Word was made flesh. We already know that. But do you know that? Do you absolutely know that when Jesus took our place on the cross, that is the Word of God. God in the flesh taking our sins upon himself, beloved. So in John 1, 12, he says, But as many as received him, hallelujah, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe, beloved, on his name. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 says, Know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? So God doesn't dwell in temples made by hands. He dwells in me and you. That's what this whole, that's what this is all about. That is what faith, that is why Jesus died on the cross, was to live in us. But because before the fall of man, before sin, Adam and Eve were in perfect harmony with God. See, beloved, the thing is, you know, the thing that's really probably hindering a lot of us is the fact that we're looking for an outward manifestation of God. We want to see God's work, beloved. God works in inside out. God works inside out. We have to begin to think like God. As we think like God, we start to talk like God. As we start talking like God, we begin to walk like God. And then our way, um, he says, uh, and I love this. He said, uh, uh, he said, it is God that girds me with strength and makes my, makes my way perfect. 
The Bible says that we should know that good and acceptable uh, and perfect will of God, beloved. God wants me to know that good and perfect will. Um, the good will of God is you knowing his word and and coming after him. That's the good and that is part of the perfect will of God. But the perfect will of God is that we remove everything that's blocking that flow. That is the perfect will of God. And what I mean by that is it allows you to flow. The Holy Spirit has a place uh, like a... Uh, 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 airplane, uh, runway. <laughs> you gotta get this beloved. It, it, the path of the word of God is like the Holy Spirit taking off on your runway in your mind to cause you to beloved excel spiritually and mentally in your mind. He said, we are seated in heavenly places with Christ. How can you be seated with Christ if you're still down here and you're not even got off the landing, um, off the takeoff, off the runway? Hallelujah. You've got all these blocks. You've got luggage. you got, you know, uh, men out there doing this. The devil saying whatever. Hallelujah. You've got all this stuff that's keeping you from taking off in the spirit and 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 what i mean taking off is flowing with the holy ghost we don't do this in and of ourselves this is not something that we are just fabricating beloved this is um the bible says that we are uh god's workmanship we are hit we are crafted he's the one who is has us on that lathe uh it's a wood lathe that you put a piece of wood on and then they take that chisel and they begin to form that piece of wood into whatever it is that he is wanting to create we are that one beloved on that lathe, on that woodworking table for Christ. We are his workmanship created in Christ to the glory of God, to do his perfect will. Um, we, but here's the thing. We have to <coughs> cooperate with God. Beloved, we have to cooperate with God. God, um, the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. We have to work it out with God. We can't just sit back and say, oh God, here I am. And then go on about your life and you're not seeking the Lord. You're not reading your Bible. You're not praising and worshiping. You, at that point, I would have to say, ask Father to give you the desire uh, and a hunger and a thirst for his righteousness. Um, and renounce your pride. And cut that off in Jesus' name. Okay, so in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. It says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Beloved, it is God's power working in us. We just, beloved, we just, uh, we just talked about that God's way is in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. God's way is is in the sanctuary. So he says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. It is God's power, his flow of the Holy Spirit that works in us. See, God wants to come. He wants to work in us and then beloved through us. Hallelujah. Luke 9, 1, he said, then he called his 12 disciples together, gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Luke 10, 19, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy that nothing shall by any means hurt you. Listen, beloved, we have to understand you got to get this one point. You have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. The Bible says he gave us power and authority over everything, over the devil, all the works of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Hallelujah. And then the psalmist said, and we've already read it, that God that girds me with strength and makes my way perfect. As God girds you, beloved, guess what he's going to do? He's going to, through, as you walk it out in faith, he's going to help you to tread down your enemy. 
Hallelujah. You know, I see people having these bumper stickers and flags. It says it's got a snake and something else. And it says, don't tread on me. Hallelujah. We shouldn't be treading on one another. Beloved, we should be treading down our enemy. The Bible says even in Genesis chapter uh, 3, he, he prophesies of uh, Adam and Eve. He said, your seed, um, he will try, the, the, the serpent will bruise your heel, but you will crush his head. Jesus said, behold, I give unto you power to crush, tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. God has already given us this power and authority. If we're not operating in it, though, there's a block. There's a block in the flow. See that? There's a flow. There's a, there's a takeoff. There's a, there's a, there's a, you know, on, on, in an airport, airport, there's a, there's a takeoff. There's something blocking you from taking off. There's something blocking from the Holy Spirit coming on the path of his word in you. So we got to tread down our enemy. We got to take possession of the land, beloved. And remember Psalm 77, 13 says that God's way is in the sanctuary. We are the temple. We are the sanctuary. God's course of action, his power is in the sanctuary. You are that sanctuary. God's power works in and through us. He gives us power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. He said, listen. We get born again. We give our life to Christ. And John 1, 12 says, but as many as received him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Listen, it's about believing on the name of God. It's about being in faith. The Bible says we go from faith to faith. Glory to glory. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, level to level. If you are trying to ascend spiritually without being submitted to Father God, without being submitted to this process, you're ascending illegally. And it will only bring you down. It will not bring you up. Listen, you have to understand, the Bible says we don't take this honor upon ourselves. Father God, even as Aaron was called, we don't take this honor upon ourselves to go preaching the gospel in Jesus' name. Number one, God places that honor upon us at the right time, at the right season season. Beloved, if you are trying to ascend and go and not wait on God, you are ascending illegally and you are attracting devil after devil to come into your ministry and cause confusion. And what that does is it creates dragons in the spirit, unclean spirits and unfalse prophets. Hallelujah. We got to get it. Listen, God is wanting for us to ascend in our spirit, through the flow, through the path of the Holy Ghost, this is the safest place for you to be, beloved. Please listen. This is the safest place. When the Holy Spirit is taking you in lift off. hey, woo! <laughs> ain't no devil in hell. Listen, listen, you got to understand, ain't no devil in hell going to keep you from where God wants you to be. You got to hear it. You got to listen and really hear what the word of God is saying. Hallelujah. So he says that is, that is to operate as sons and daughters of God. See, when he says to become the sons of God, he's saying he gives us power. John 1, 12 says, uh, but as many as received him, that's Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We have been power, we have been given power to become the sons of God. But the minute, beloved, me and you get born again, we ain't operating as sons of God. We still got th stinking thinking. You might still have an old drug place in your mind, an um, uh, old place of hangout. You got to be renewed. You got to be cleansed from all of that trash from your past. And what I've been learning about the flow of God is he will deliver you and then he will clean up all the bad fruit that came through that place of sin, beloved. It's a cleansing, it's a sanctification process for God to flow through you and then in you, hallelujah. 
So we learn how to tread down the enemy and the, and the fruitless deeds of darkness in ourselves and recover out of the snare of the devil. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping up. I just want to take you here, beloved. It says in, um, uh, it says in Ephesians, and I'm going to go real quick to the book of Ephesians. Hallelujah. I'm going to go really quick to the book of Ephesians. He says in Ephesians chapter 5, this is such a beautiful scripture. He says, verse 8 through 11, he says, um, uh, he said, let, let, uh, this is verse six, let no man deceive you with vain words for because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. He said, be not you therefore partakers with them. We are not to be partakers with the children of disobedience. These are actually children of God, beloved, who have, um, fallen back into sin. They are backslidden. Okay, and maybe you are one of those who have actually been backslidden. All you have to do is repent and renounce, uh, renounce that and ask the Lord to give you a heart to come after him with all of your heart. And he will do that. He done it for me. He'll do it for you, beloved. He said, be you not therefore partakers with them, with children of disobedience, beloved. He says, then for you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord Walk as children of the light. We are called to walk as children of light. He says here, listen, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. <clears throat> this is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, beloved. Goodness, righteousness, and truth. Hallelujah. He says, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. So as we're walking in uh, goodness and righteousness and truth, it says this as we walk in it and we walk by faith, the Bible says we will begin to prove. Hallelujah. We will begin to prove what is that good, listen, acceptable, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And another scripture says uh, that we would uh, that we would know that good and, and perfect, acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, that's where we're trying to come to, is to, beloved, the perfect will of God. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Um, hallelujah. He says, for, um, he said, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever does not, does make manifest is light. So beloved, you're wanting to see the manifestation of God. Allow him to start reproving and correcting the darkness in you. And he's not going to whip on you. He's not going to beat you up with condemnation. He, how God has done this in me has always been love. He will just show me. He will show me an area I need to work on. And then as he shows me a scripture, an area to pray, I start praying that scripture. And then next thing I know, it's just like, uh, what's the word? Effort, effortless. He just begins to work in me. And next thing I know, I'm not even in that place anymore. And I'm like, wow, I didn't even do anything to come out of that place. But all I did was say a prayer. I said, Lord, please have your perfect will done in me. And next thing I know, beloved, God had done it. It's already been done. Can you please understand? It's effortless. You don't have to sweat over it. There's not, nothing you, you don't have to, you just got to get it. The Bible says it is not our righteousness. It's not my works. Listen, that doesn't mean that we don't get up and walk in obedience. That's not what that scripture is saying. It is saying that it's not because of what we're doing that makes our way perfect. It is because of our faith and our belief in God that as we start walking in faith, there it is. It, it has nothing to do about what I'm doing. It's about why I'm doing it. I'm walking in faith. I'm putting my trust in Father. Listen, I pray you get it. I just pray you get it in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for helping my, my brothers and sisters to get it. And so he says, 
um, that we are to, uh, the fruitless deeds of darkness, we're not to have anything to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. And, and Father God will help us to expose the fruitless deeds of darkness that are in us, those areas that have not bare fruit. And those areas where he starts cleaning us up and then he'll start pruning those dead branches off. And beloved, it's beautiful because it's so liberating. It's so freeing. And you realize, wow, I have been believing a lie. You know, so Matthew 12, 33, he says, make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad for a tree is recognized by its fruit. Hallelujah. If you're not bearing good fruit right now, beloved, Stop and pray and say, Lord, I renounce sin. And I'm asking you to help me to hate sin. Whatever sin it is that right now that you're struggling with, ask him to help you to hate it. If it's just the sin of not seeking him, say, Lord, help me to hate that sin. Help me to hate that place of not seeking you. If that's it, renounce it. Cut it off. If it is you are struggling with sexual impure thoughts in your mind, say, Father God, help me to hate adultery. Help me to hate fornication. Help, help me to hate those idols that I have been worshiping in. Help me to hate the idol of myself, meaning putting myself on a pedestal. You know, sisters and brothers, if, if we are so caught up in selfies, we are so caught up in taking pictures of ourselves and posting pictures of ourselves. What we're doing is we are actually seeking approval. We are trying to gain approval. We are trying to 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 uh, get somebody to say, "Oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, you're so handsome." Blah 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 blah. If you know who you are as a child of God, you don't have to do any of that. None of that matters anymore. Hallelujah. Um, listen, 2 Timothy 2, 25, 26. He says, in meekness, and this is the key, and I was talking about this being the key to our uh, deliverance. This is the key to allowing God to flow through us. He says in 2 Timothy 2, 25, 26, in meekness, that is gentleness of mind, humility and having a need for father instructing those he says in meekness that is humility and needy and gentleness of mind that is coming to him as a child you have an expectation of god not of man man will not provide for you i cannot provide for you no one can provide for you we should not have our expectation in man our expectation has to be to father god listen in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God preadventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Beloved, he's not just talking here about people who have never been born again. He's talking about born again believers who have actually been trapped, back, had gone back into sin. Beloved, this is where a lot of the church is today. We are back, we are have been ensnared and we're walking with just loaded down with oppression of the devil. And we don't even know what, how we need to come out. This is the thing. This is the thing. He says, God pre-adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Brothers and sisters, we have to acknowledge God, number one, that he is the one that draws us. Okay, God is the one that is drawing you right now. He's drawing you by his spirit, beloved. Listen, God is drawing you by his spirit. God is drawing you by his spirit. And the Bible says no man comes to the Father except God draws them. So if God is drawing you today, and you say, I'll do it another day. I don't want to hear that message. It's not for me. That's too much work. She's talking about a spiritual workout. Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's good. And I know every one of us need to go. And we need to go work out physically in the physical. We need to go walk. We need to make sure we're healthy, exercise healthy. But this is the thing. You've got to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And if you're not willing to walk out that process, you need to ask God, I, I don't know what's hindering me here, if it's fear. 
if it, it, a lot of people are afraid that God is going to correct them because they've been corrected by their earthly fathers in an abusive way and they feel like Father God's going to do them the same way. Beloved, you got to get it. If God is drawing you today, God is drawing you right now. He says, harden not your heart. It's in the Hebrews. He said, harden not. He said, beloved, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the day of provocation. What does that mean? When the children of Israel tempted the Lord, they resisted, rebelled. They put up idols. They made a golden calf. They were out there as Moses was up there getting the Ten Commandments. They were down there literally worshiping a golden cow. Listen, he said, today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. What does that mean, hardening your heart? That means you hear me and he, you turn and you go and you don't want to listen. You don't want to keep seeking after Father. I'm asking you right now, ask him to get to the root of that place right there, right there, right there, right there. Because once you get past that place and you actually start wanting to mature and to study the word of God, you will start, man, there's so much freedom. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you because God has helped me. And my deliverance didn't come uh, from, from seeking out men and women of God. My deliverance have come in studying and worshiping the Father. Just getting into my prayer time. And I, beloved, there was times God showed me there was some things I was doing in error and I didn't know it. But you know what? I kept coming after him. And even when the devil was like, look, look at you. You only come to God when you need him. Blah, blah, blah. And the Lord said, at least you're coming. At least you're acknowledging me that you need me. Listen, at least you're coming. Come after him with all of your heart. Come after him. Press through. The Bible says that uh, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. You got to take it by force, beloved. Satan's just going to try to stop you at every pass. But guess what? You got to press through. You got to say, Father, remove this block in me. Whatever's keeping me from worshiping you. Whatever's keeping me from truly picking up my cross and obeying you. Lord, I'm asking you to remove those blocks out of my life. And beloved, listen, he'll do it. He will do it, beloved. Just let him. Just let him. Just do it. Just let him. Just surrender, you know. And so he says, what's so beautiful is we're waiting on someone else to bring deliverance. But he says here, and I, beloved, I know there's a, a time for teaching. I'm not saying that we don't need to listen to teachers and preachers. I thank God that you're listening to me right now. I'm not saying that there's not a time that you need to. But he says, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. That doesn't mean that you don't have help. But see, it means recovering yourself. There, the, the understanding there is that you are cooperating with God. You are working out your salvation with fear and trembling. If you really truly want to recover yourself out of the snare of the devil, you got to operate with God. If that means you go to a church where God's leading you, go. If that means you listen to a teaching that God is sending you, Listen, study it out, make it of great value of importance. He said, whatever you obey, whatever you make valid and important in your life, that is what you're going to exalt. So if you really truly want to exalt the word of God, start putting it first. Start saying, Father, I need you to be first. I need you to be exalted and lifted up in my mind above me, above my thoughts, above all this trash, that all this dysfunctional thinking. Man, when you do that, hey, hey, whoo, hallelujah. Hey, you're on the path. You're, listen, you're on the runway. You just got to keep, you, you got to remove that baggage. You got to remove all that luggage. Them luggage cars are going everywhere. All that baggage from the past, baggage from this, baggage from that. It's trying to block the path, the runway of the Holy Spirit flowing through you. Uh, that's the only way, the best way I could describe what I see in the spirit is, is it's like a runway and, and, and the enemy is just trying to block the flow of God. That's all. He's after your flow. He don't, listen, beloved, he don't want your stuff. <laughs> he wants your flow. If he can block that, he's done. Listen, he, he knows he can't take you to hell. But he's going to doggone try to keep you from bringing anybody else to heaven and pulling them out of hell. Hallelujah. You better get it. That's all this warfare is about. It ain't even about you. He's just trying to keep you from ministering to other people. 
That's all he's been trying to do all these years with me as I've been growing in my gift and my ability. He's trying to keep me from flowing. He's trying to keep the flow of God in, uh, from God flowing in my life by being offended. Offen offense is the number one thing the devil uses is offenses. Beloved, I'm wrapping up. Here we go. In Psalm 74, 1, 4, and, and I, I'm just going to be real honest. This particular psalm is the psalm that is uh, very uh, connected to my mission in God. Um, man, this is a powerful psalm right here. God, God actually called me um, in, uh, uh, well, he called me out of Ezekiel. And, and he also called me in Malachi. But this is one of the psalms. It, this is a powerful psalm right here. This is uh, one of the psalms that just burns in my heart. He says in Psalm chapter 1, and I'm just reading four verses and then we're going to close out. Well, I might read down a little bit, but it says, O oh God, why hast thou cast us off forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? Remember thy congregation, which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed, this Mount Zion, where thou hast dwelt. Lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolations, even all that the enemy has done wickedly in the sanctuary. Thine enemies roar in the midst of the congregation. They set up their ensigns for signs. Now jump on down. He says, they cast fire into thy sanctuary. They have defiled by casting down the dwelling place of thy name to the ground. They said in their hearts, let us destroy them together. They have burned up all the synagogues of God in the land. We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet. There is no, that neither is there among us any that knows how long. Oh God, how shall the adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? Why withdrawest thou thy hand, even thy right hand? Pluck it out of thy bosom. For God, for God is my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. Hallelujah. He goes on down and he's just worshiping the Lord. But the, the, the purpose in me reading this is you got to see what the psalmist is saying right here, beloved. Good morning, beloved. He says here, O oh God, why hast thou cast off forever? Why does thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? He's talking about God's anger smoking against the sheep of the pasture of God. This is the church, beloved. This is serious business right here. He says, remember thy congregation which thou hast purchased of old. See, the Bible says for, for Christ was... For Christ was slain before the foundation of the world. God already knew before he ever created us in his image that he was going to have to come and redeem us. He already knew that we were going to make choices based off of lies that the devil had sold us. So he already knew, beloved. This is the thing. He said, he's asking God, lift up your feet unto these desolations. See how the enemy has destroyed. He said, had done wickedly in the sanctuary. And we were just talking about that you are that sanctuary. I am that sanctuary. You, beloved, are the sanctuary. The Bible says God does not dwell in temples made by hands. We've already, um, uh, we've already established that. He does not dwelling in your church. He dwells in you. And if he's not in you, you need to get born again. Hallelujah. Listen, beloved. He says the enemy has done wickedly in the sanctuary. He is talking about a backslidden believers. A revelation. He said in the book of Revelation, he said, um, he told him, he said, I wish you were either hot or cold. He said, but because you're neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. You're trying to ride the fence. You want a little of God and a little of the world. He said, I'm about to spew you out of my mouth. Come on now. He said, if, if it's hard for the righteous to be saved, what shall become of the ungodly and the wicked? Listen, listen. He said the path is narrow. When he says that it's, it's hard for the righteous to be saved, that's talking about those who are seeking after God. We're to lean and trust in his righteousness, not our own works, beloved. He said, if it's hard for the righteous, he said, the path is straight. He said, and few be there that find it. But the, uh, but the broad path, that's the world just drawing you. He said, leads to destruction and many be there that go in. Listen, beloved, you can't be on that broad path. You got to get off that path. And you got to start learning how to stop the enemy at the gate. 
If you're on that broad path, you got to get off that path. Because that broad path is just whatever goes. Whatever. Whatever. What? Well, let the will of the Lord be done. No. Listen. Everything that's coming at you is not the will of the Lord. Sickness is not the will of the Lord. Backslidden is not the will of the Lord. Listen, you got to get it. He says, thy enemies roar, roar in the midst of thy congregation. They have set up their ensigns for signs. This word ensign in the Hebrew, you know what? You want to know what that means? That word ensign for signs. It means the enemy has planted his sign in your sanctuary. You know, signs, uh, signs and banners um, in a time of war, beloved. Amen. God bless you too, brother. Uh in the time of war, um, like the United States of America, where we live, if we go over and we are going to battle an enemy, we will take our flag. And it represents the United States of America. It, re it represents the authority of the United States of America. Okay, our sign and our banner should be a banner of love. The Bible uh, calls um, God, uh, there's a Hebrew word that we call him, uh, I want to say it's Jehovah Nisi. That's God, my banner. Um, if I'm wrong, I'll correct me, but I believe Jehovah Nisi is God, my banner. Uh, that means his banner, and even the psalmist said his banner of love over me, his banner is love. His banner over me is love. Hallelujah. His sign is love. We, we, we raise our flags in love in the sanctuary. But in this Psalm 74, he says that our enemies roar in the midst of the congregation. They set up their ensigns for signs, beloved. This is talking about the enemy. You know what sign he's put up? In the sanctuary of our heart, it, you know, we said God doesn't dwell in temples made by hands, that we are the sanctuary. We are the temple of God. You know what the sign of the enemy is trying to put up in our heart? Look at what you've done. Look at what she done. Look at what he done. Look at everything you've done in your past, how you fell. Blah, 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 blah. Lie after lie after lie after lie. And what we're trying to do now is, number one, repent of our sins, renounce our witchcraft, renounce trying to be in control. Beloved, control is witchcraft. I don't care if you're not summoning up devils. If you are trying to be in control, it is a spirit of witchcraft because that's what witchcraft is. It is manipulation and trying to be in control. You have to let go of your control and say, Lord, help me to trust you and walk by faith. If it was not, if we could see it it wouldn't be faith anyway beloved and that's what the lord told me back whenever i was being disobedient in ministry he said daughter you want to see it before you go he said that's not faith he said now i want you to stop doing that beloved he wants you to stop doing that stop looking for something before you go when god gives you a word and says oh uh forgive you pick up and you say, Father, you make a confession. It says with your mouth you confess and in your heart you believe. Confession is very, very crucial and very powerful. Your confession in uh, Joshua 1, 8, he said the book, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But it shall, and I said, Lord, what does that mean? This, uh, it shall not depart out of your mouth. He said, daughter, this book of the law shall be your only confession. That means when sickness comes at your gate, with his stripes I'm healed. When the devil comes with condemnation, I am born again. I am free. I am delivered. Beloved, you got to get it. You got to say, praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, we got to tear down the sign of the enemy. And we got to raise the standard of the flag of the Lord. And we got to say, we are healed, delivered, and set free. He says in the New Testament, he, all, he causes us to always triumph. Hallelujah. We always have the victory. Beloved, just please go back and listen to the, this message. I want to leave you with this today. Let God have his way in your sanctuary. Father, we just come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we want to say thank you for this word. It's so very powerful, Father God. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We, we worship you for the power of your name, Father God. 
Father, help us to understand that, Lord, you're wanting to bring deliverance in our life. You're wanting to bring restoration in our life. You want to restore us. You said, I will uh, restore to you the years uh, the, 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 that the locusts have eaten, the caterpillar, the palmer worm. Father God, and then in that very same verse, in the book of Hosea or in Joel, I think it's in Joel, I believe it's in Joel, you said, and in those days I will pour out my spirit. How do you restore, Father God, the years that the enemy has stolen? It is through the pouring out of your spirit. But Father, there is so much in us that's blocking your flow through us and I'm asking you and I'm asking you for my brothers and sisters that are watching help them to humbly submit to your flow help them to humbly submit themselves to working out their salvation with fear and trembling father we need your help father we need your help today help us father to do this in Jesus holy precious name beloved until next time God bless you May the Lord keep you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you his children, his peace. In Jesus' name, please like and share this video. And until next time, praise the Lord. Just praise him. Just press through and praise in Jesus' name.